Have you ever tried to take a photo of a highly contrasty scene and ended up with an image where all the whites were just crushed and the blacks were blown out, no details were left anymore? Well, that problem is well known, but we can get around it when using the HDR function of our drone. I will show you how it works and I will be using a DJI Inspire 2 drone, but you can use all kinds of DJI drones, the Phantom series, the Mavic series and so on. Product links to all the products I am using myself can be found in the description below the video. Let's get started. Before I now show you how to capture amazing HDRs, let me briefly explain what HDR photography is all about. Firstly, HDR stands for High Dynamic Range. Dynamic range is a term that is often used in photography and you might ask yourself, what does it finally stand for? Because all big camera brands, they offer their newest cameras, their latest models and they say, oh wow, this new camera has 12 stops or whatsoever of dynamic range. What does it mean? It is pretty simple to understand. The dynamic range basically stands for the difference in a picture between the lightest light and the darkest dark. That means at some point a camera is not capable of recording more details than the lightest light and then it just turns into white or the, the darkest gray and then it turns into black. And the higher the dynamic range, the more details we can record before it turns into plain white or plain black. So having a high dynamic range is pretty amazing. But sometimes we just have sceneries where even the highest dynamic range cannot capture the scenery. That means the sun is just too bright and the shadows are just too dark and all the details are lost. And that is where HDR photography comes into place. Let's take a look at it. HDR photography makes use of a very simple trick. Instead of having one single photograph where the dynamic range just covers all the dark and all the bright spots at once, the camera just takes many photos in a row very fast and some of the photos are underexposed so that we can really see all the very very bright areas nicely and some of the photos are overexposed so that we can see all the shadowy areas quite nicely and then once you put it into a computer Tada! you get an awesome picture and you can see all the details in the shadows and all the details in the highlights. That is how it works. That is the principle. Let's right now take a look at the DJI GO 4 app and let's take an amazing HDR photo. First of all, we want to open up the Photo Settings menu. Next, we click at Photo Settings. First off, we change the photo from Single Shot to AEB. And we can now select to either take 3 or 5 photos in a row. I can highly recommend taking as many photos as possible, in this case 5. And finally, we're gonna change the image format to RAW. We only want to record RAW photographs. Now it is time to reposition the camera to capture the best shot. We focus and tap the shutter button. Now the drone takes 5 photos in a row, each with different exposure settings. Before I now show you how to merge the photos together using Adobe Photoshop, I firstly want to note two things. First of all, don't fly your drone when it is super windy and then try to take HDR photos. It's not going to work because the perspective changes and the editing program might have a hard time stitching together the photos. The same, by the way, counts if, you're, if you want to take uh, HDR photos of people because people tend to move a tiny little bit from photo to photo and sometimes the results are quite odd even though from the artistic side they might be interesting but 
for general HDR photography. I don't know, humans are not the best objects to take photos of. And finally, there's one thing that I need to recommend. You guys should turn on RAW. Don't take any JPEGs when it comes to HDR photography. Always shoot the photos in RAW. That is very, very important because the photos are not compressed and contain a whole lot more of information. And the photos that I took were raw photos as well. And right now I'm gonna show you how to stitch them together using Adobe Photoshop. Before we open up Photoshop, let me briefly show you some HDR examples of mine that I put together over the last few days here in Israel. So the first HDR I can show you is a very classical HDR. You can really see this kind of uh, unique HDR look. We have all the details here in the shadowy areas of the trees while we are still directly looking at the sun, which is pretty incredible because usually if you're taking one photo, that is impossible. We have all the details in the shadowy side of the tower and in the bright side of the tower too. Next, we're having this photo of old Jaffa in Israel. And actually, I wanted to take a photo of this alley down here that leads through these old houses. But the problem was that when I took a single photograph, because the alley was a little darker, I had to really brighten the image and all the chairs, all these, I don't know what they actually are, maybe water tanks, basically all wider surfaces were really blown out then, but the HDR made it possible to save all the details down here in the alley and up here on the rooftops. Next is a photo that I took of an abandoned hotel while the sun was going down and we had strong shadows and almost nothing was visible while spots like here on the roof were completely blown out. And the HDR made it possible that we can see all the details on this photo. And finally, there is another photo showing a ship and we can see that even though we're facing the sun again, which is again the probably hardest angle for the camera to record details, we have all the details here in the water, plus of course in the ship, which is pretty cool. And right now we're gonna focus on recreating this HDR photograph, simply because not only can we put together an HDR photo, but I can show you some extra tools that you can use. By the way, all photographs were taken with drones. If you wanna know which drones I'm using, check out the links in the description below the video. They will lead you to the best drones that you can buy for money and in different pricing categories. By the way, if you wanna to put together some raw HDRs yourself, but you don't have the files, you can download them on tomstechtime.com HDR. There are a few free files you don't even have to register. It is pretty sweet. So let's get started by first of all, taking a look at the folder where all the photographs are stored. I'm very sorry, I already messed around with them a little bit before. So those are the five files. Here we, for example, have one of the darker HDR raw files where we can see more details in the bright areas, but none at all at the ship. While here, for example, we can see some details in the ship, but almost no details in the sun. So let's put them together. It is very simple. We, first of all, Select them all, now do a right click, open with, and we select Adobe Photoshop CC. This is not only gonna open up Adobe Photoshop, but Camera Raw as well. So here we go, we have the five photos. We can take a look at them. But how do we finally fit them together? It is very simple. First of all, we need to select them all, Command A on a Mac, or alternatively, you can always click at this little menu up here and can click at Select All. Next, we're now gonna click at Merge to HDR to merge the raw photographs together. This might take a second depending on the power of your computer. Once the preview is put together, it usually already looks pretty fascinating, but I chose a more difficult, a more advanced photograph because I want to show you some extra tools that we can later on use. So first of all, this is the preview of the HDR raw photograph. And here we have some options. Let me briefly explain them. First, we have align images. You should definitely leave this selected. That is very important. For example, if the camera only slightly moved while you were taking the shots. In my case, I was using a drone for sure. The drone was slightly moving, so I'm definitely gonna leave this checked. Or for example, if you're using a normal DSLR and you just move the camera a tiny little bit while taking the photographs, for example, when not using a tripod, this is one of the 
probably most helpful little inbuilt tools. Next, we have apply auto tone and color adjustments. It is finally not necessary to leave this ticked or not. We can leave it ticked because it doesn't matter. We can change all settings later manually, but let's just leave it selected for now. Next, we have deghosting. Deghosting is really interesting. Deghosting is an effect that while we're, for example, taking the five photographs in this case and the object that we're taking a photo of moves, of course, it is hard to fit the photo together. I, for example, once took a photograph of a person swimming in the, in the Dead Sea as an HDR. The problem was that while I took the five photos, the person was moving and then I put the HDR together and the person was kind of split up. It didn't really look nice. But then you can select the deghosting and um, Camera Raw really puts the person or object back together and down here in the red area we can see where it did some work even though in this case it is not really necessary because I don't think that we're gonna spot the details in uh, the water down there in the corner. So once we're happy we can go up here and click at merge and first of all Camera Raw wants us to save the file. Usually I just save it right into the folder where I have the normal photographs. So let's just tap save. And now it brings us back to the main screen of Camera Raw. And down here we have the raw HDR photograph and up here we have the files that we use to create the raw HDR photo. So let's get started. We can already see that when we're taking a look at the normal dashboard that the, uh, that the program itself changed some of the settings, it brought down the contrast, it uh, lowered the exposure, it played around with basically all settings a bit. We can already get started changing them, but before we do so, let me show you an amazing tool and that tool is named the Adjustment Brush. Once selected, it opens up another menu and we again have basically the same settings, temperature, tint, exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, etc, etc. But the difference is that now with this tool we can work on a selected area of the photograph only, which is pretty amazing. So in this case I would first go down here and change the size of the brush, even though in my case 12 seems to be alright. We can change the feather, the flow and the density. It is very important that you enable auto mask because otherwise you will really really have to manually perfectly um, select the area that you want to work on and if you leave auto mask turned on usually Camera Raw really does a good job on helping you selecting the correct area. So let's get started. I want to select the whole ship so I'm gonna hover over it with the adjustment brush. Now I'm pressing the adjustment brush and I'm just following the shape of the ship once entirely. I want to cover the whole ship and now I let go and boom we see that there is a little pin here. But now how can we determine which area has been masked? Very simple. Click at mask down here in the bottom right corner and we can see okay it wasn't perfect. I could do it again because for example um, here right above these antennas or whatever they are. We have some area that is selected too. But let's just say it is pretty good for the first try. Let's turn the mask back off and now we can go up into the settings and now it gets really really cool. If we for example higher the value of the shadows we can put it on. We can see the ship appearing which is amazing while as you can see we only affect this area. We're not affecting any other area of this photograph which is pretty sweet. So now we could bring the shadows up, could bring the blacks down a tiny little bit, could raise the contrast, could bring in some clarity and some saturation for example. Boom! We can see the ship already very very carefully. We might even add some extra brightness to the ship like that maybe. Pretty sweet and now if we wanted to apply a new adjustment brush to a new area that is of course doable too. We basically just click here at new and now we could select a new area. But it is always helpful to reset all the, the settings, reset local correction settings. And now we could again go down here, we could change the size of the adjustment brush, we could select a new area and then we could start working on that. And if you want to go back and say, oops, I really need to change some of the settings regarding one of the areas that I already worked on, you basically click on it and it opens up the settings again and you can feel free to really work on 
uh, that certain area again. So now let's go back to the main um, dashboard by clicking at this little hand tool up here. And that brings us to the main screen. Here we can now uh, apply some effects that will affect the whole photograph. So for example, if I now bring the clarity up, it's gonna affect the entire uh, photograph, not only a certain area. Next, we're gonna bring some vibrance in and some saturation because we really want the, uh, this, this evening tone to be, to be shown. Um, besides that, I actually like it so far. Let's just make some minimal changes, maybe raise some blue and the aquas and the orange tone. Now we can see that the horizon is not perfectly straight. Let's try to use the auto tool for that up here, the straighten tool. If we double tap that, it should straighten the horizon automatically. As you can see, it tilted the, the photograph. Usually it works quite nice. Unfortunately, if I click enter with this photo, it doesn't really do a good job. So I'm gonna press command Z and go back. But we can do it manually when tapping at the transform tool. And in here, we now uh, have all these lines that are really, really helpful and we can manually rotate the photograph until we think that the horizon is perfectly level. Actually, it's really hard to determine the horizon on this photograph. <laughs> Plus 0.1, okay, could have been worse. So now I'm going back and boom, uh, that's like a first draft of the edit. Of course, I could go in depth. I could, for example, play with the dehaze or I could remove chromatic aberration or um, enable profile corrections depending on the lenses and cameras that we were using. It is really, really powerful. But basically, let's say we have put together a raw HDR photograph with ease. And now we can basically tap at open image or we can already save it here but we can tap at open image and that is gonna bring up the normal Photoshop dashboard. So here we go, that is the normal Photoshop. And now if you wanted to work on some stuff, you could do it. We could try to remove the ship back here if it's in our way or whatever. Uh, but that's finally up to you. I don't wanna show you that now. And now we could finally click at file, save as, and then you could save it somewhere as a normal JPEG, for example, to upload it to Facebook or to Instagram or whatever you wish. I hope this tutorial was helpful and I hope that you can download the free raw HDR files if you wanna mess around with them at tomstechtime.com slash HDR. Thank you guys for watching this episode of mine. Feel free to leave a thumb up and to subscribe to never ever miss any of my upcoming episodes again. And there's one thing I need to recommend. You should get yourself a super fast micro SD card. That is really important because the faster the micro SD card, the faster the drone can take the photos in a row. And that basically means that the result is probably gonna be a whole lot better because the drone tends to move a tiny little bit and a fast micro SD card is worth it. I have tested 10 by the way and Product links to the two fastest that I found can be found in the description below the video. And right now, stay tuned and fly safe.